Good afternoon, everyone. I'm going to be sharing with you in this video how I set up my entire suite of products, uh, my entire uh, setup with Lux Algo, complete with all the, the alerts that I want and what I do when those alerts go off. All right, so uh, this, this particular chart I'm going to be setting up, this is the pound Australian dollar. Uh, currently, it's on the 15-minute chart. But I'm going to switch to the 75-minute chart. And here, I'm going to uh, start off with the default settings, which is 12 and 26. And then I'm going to go ahead and bring down my sensitivity until I have too much noise, but it's going to be based on where the highs and the lows are. But I'm, I'm also looking at where are my entries. So my entries are important to see these signals show up close to or around my, uh, my entries. So I might go down to nine here because it gets some of these a little bit higher. Yep. And let's see if what eight does it. Now eight brings in too much noise. So now we bring down the agility to try to push those confirmations closer to the highs and lows. And that already brings in too much noise, I think. Yeah, I think so. Uh, no, I'm actually okay with that. Even the noise isn't bad because it's outside of the, it's outside of where I would like I wouldn't use the, where the noises are not my entries. So I'm okay with that. And in fact, I can continue going downwards on the 75 minute, down to 922. Uh, that might be as far as I go. Yeah, that's as far as I'm gonna go. So nine, 923. So 923, that's my settings. Um, and there we go. So now let's set up the, uh, well, this is how I set up my absolute strength histogram. I keep it at 10 and three pretty much all the time. Every once in a while I might adjust it where it's like 10 and four with a little bit of smoothing, maybe nine and three, depending, depending on how things are. Uh, but typically speaking, 10 and three is fine for me. And then I got my ATR at 14. I've got my oscillator at eight. Depending on how things are, I might also go to six, but typically speaking, I keep it around eight because uh, it gets a little noisy if it's much smaller than that. And then my volatility, I keep it at 14 and two. And there you have it. Now, let's set up the alerts. So some people are asking this a lot. So how do I set up alerts? I want to be notified when the price does a certain thing, um, i.e. when it crosses my leading edge of the equalizer. So when I mouse over top of the symbol, British Pound Australian Dollar, I can click these three dots here and add alert. Then I go and I grab the price. So the price, when it crosses, I don't care if it crosses up or down, I wanna know about every crossing of Lux Algos, then the next drop down, Cloud 2. And I want it once per bar close, so every time the bar closes, I want to be notified. Uh, I just got um, the super premium version, so now I can go open-ended. And then down here, I just make it so that it's uh, crossing leading edge. And then I create that. Now when the alert goes off, I have, ex I have everything I need to go and check on that chart because not only do I have this all here, but I go ahead and I save the indicator template and I call it that. And I remember the symbol, remember the interval. And now when I pull up my pound Australian dollar, whenever I get that notification on the 75 minute, I can just automatically open my template for the uh, British pound, uh, Australian dollar, 75 right there. So that's how I set up 
everything to trade on a currency pair. Um, let's do it again so we can see it uh, uh, applied differently. So this is Australian New Zealand dollar. Uh, lots of ranging happening there. So we're going to move it to the 75 minute. Oh, look at the beautiful trends. Oh, I'm so excited. Uh, so 12 and 26. Um, click OK. Now what we're going to do is that we're going to bring this down. Good old Lux Algo really makes it easy to get these signals or these confirmations in the right spot. I got to remember to not call them signals because they're not signals. People think they are and they're not. They're confirmations. That's not bad, I don't think. Yeah, I'm okay with that. That's good. Let's see if we can go more. Yep. It gets noisy in here, but I'm okay with that. And even like this strong that popped up here, I can see that that strong is actually a crossing down below my smooth moving average. So that's a continuation trade. Let's see what seven does. And it's more noisy, but where the noise is, it actually brings the confirmations closer to the highs and lows. Oh, <laughs> what happens if we go down to six? Okay, now we're getting too much noise. Yeah, so now we're going to go down on the agility to see if we can push it closer, push those envelopes all as close to the tops and bottoms as you can. Uh, this one, uh, yeah, no, that's okay. 23. Yep, that moved it to closer to the tops and bottoms, the highs and lows, rather. And that's where I think we have too much noise. I do like that, however. I'm okay with that because the noise actually appeared close to my entry. Yep, this is good too. Oh, no, actually I don't like that. So 722, 722 are good settings for this one on the 75 minute. So we save it, Australian, New Zealand dollar, 75. And we remember all that stuff. And then we go ahead and set the alerts. So add alert. This is the, the, the price of the Australian New Zealand dollar crossing Lux Algos Cloud 2 on the close. And we do it again. Uh, crossing leading edge. Now, the second one that I want to talk about is actually another alert that I like to use, and that is when it crosses the smooth moving average, uh, because that is also helpful in catching continuations. So that is crossing the smooth moving average. And actually, I just want to bring this down to seven because I do believe that that will hug the trends a little bit closer. Yep. Without changing, just looking at you know whether or not it changes my exit point too much. No, nope, that's good. So seven on this one, and then I go ahead and now I can now I can because I you have to have the setting done in order to set the alert because if you. If you change the setting after the alert has been made, then you're not getting the actual alert on the, that setting. It, uh, yeah, so there we go. That is how I set up my charts, folks. I hope that that helps. If you have any questions, let me know. Um, obviously, this is to match up with my trading strategy that I use. Um, so if you want to learn about that, I would encourage you to go and check out some of my earlier videos, especially the one where I'm scalping gold with this strategy because you get to see those entry points and the rules that I follow in order to maximize my profits. I look forward to, yeah, I look forward to your feedback about this. If you have any questions, further questions about, you can set up other alerts too, like um, crossing the
the uh, yeah, you can have it where it's crossing any one of the things, like a, a reversal zone if you want, whatever the case may be. Uh, so yeah, you can you can set up other alerts based on other criteria, but those are the ones that I use for my strategy, and that way I'm always on top of things. When it closes, boom, I go and check things out, and if everything checks out, because I've got my checklist, one, two, three, four, as long as I've got my four things in place, I'm, I'm taking this trade. I'm going for it. So uh, yeah, definitely check out the other strategy, the, the strategy video where I talk about uh, scalping gold. Uh, it's called like the dumb trading strategy for gold with Lux Algo or something like that. Um, check out that video because it actually walks through my own personal algorithm that I use to trade. So, um, and this is us. This is this video here is just me setting up some a couple seventy five minute charts. Uh, and I will make another video talking about why I choose 75 versus and a, and a 195 minute chart, actually. Um, and I don't choose the one hour or the three, two, three, or four hour. I get them offset now. I'll talk about that in another video. So thanks so much. This is, yeah, I'm excited because the, these settings that I'm putting up right now are going to help me. Uh, produce some callouts for people in the Lux Algo community. So if you're not a part of Lux Algo, and you and you like the strategy that I use, I encourage you to join and uh, and and uh, check out the callouts channel uh, because that's where I will be dropping the trades that I would take. Uh, and nine times out of ten, I'm going to be taking them as well. Uh, <laughs> and yeah, it just depends. Sometimes I might not take the trade, especially if I'm already in that currency pair with a fair bit of leverage. Um, I don't want, it's not good to go in. Like, so for instance, if I'm trading the Australian New Zealand dollar and I'm going long, I'm not going to go long in the Australian US dollar with the same, uh, unless I'm only using half the risk on one and then I can use the other half of my risk using money management with the other. Um, so that would be an instance where I'm not taking a trade that I'm calling out, but I may still call it out because other people may have missed the first one or whatever. I hope that that makes sense. As, as we go along, you'll catch on. Um, but yeah, that's this video. Thanks so much. Have a good day.